soon it will fly. That was one of Elon Musk's latest updates hinting that Flight 9 could launch as early as next week. The system's rapid progress supports this timeline, but approval from the FAA is still pending. At the same time, Musk is preparing for an important presentation at Starbase. In other news, SpaceX has just achieved a new reusability milestone with Falcon 9. And finally, the cause behind the IM-2 lander failure has been revealed. Let's dive into all this in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Are you ready for Flight 9? After months of anticipation and uncertainty, it looks like Starship's next big moment is finally approaching. A number of recent announcements suggest that the long-awaited Flight 9 could launch as early as this month. While everyone is still holding their breath for an official confirmation from SpaceX, Musk, or the FAA, the excitement is building. And now we've received the clearest signal yet from Musk himself. Besides his brief but telling, soon it'll fly tweet, Musk followed up with a more detailed message. Just before the Starship flight next week, I will give a company talk explaining the Mars game plan in Starbase, Texas, which will also be live streamed on X. Let's take a moment to focus on the first part of that tweet. Just before the Starship flight next week, that's a direct confirmation. If Musk's words hold true, we're looking at a launch during the fourth week of May between the 19th and the 25th. This lines up well with other recent statements and signs of preparations at Starbase. It's a major development. After a roughly two and a half month gap since Flight 8, SpaceX now appears confident that Flight 9 is ready to go. And honestly, that time has likely been necessary. Each test flight of Starship brings improvements, and preparing for such a massive complex launch vehicle requires careful, deliberate effort. The hardware itself is showing strong progress. Take S-35, the upper stage for Flight 9. On May 12th, it successfully completed a powerful six-engine static fire test. SpaceX celebrated the event on social media, stating, Starship completed a long-duration six-engine static fire and is undergoing final preparations for the ninth flight test. Musk added his own thoughts, marveling at the sheer force involved. Frankly, given the insane amount of power flowing through them, it's amazing that rocket engines don't just blow up every time. That kind of confidence isn't thrown around lightly, and it shows how well the Starship systems are performing heading into this next phase. Following the static fire, S-35 was transported from Massey back to Mega Bay 2 on the morning of May 13th. There, it's undergoing thorough inspections to verify the vehicle's condition after the intense test. The team is also preparing to install the flight termination system and the payload. If all goes according to plan, these steps should be wrapped up by the end of the week, with S-35 set to move to the launch pad early next week. The same time, Musk indicated the flight could take place. Meanwhile, B-14 is already in position. It was moved to the launch pad on the evening of the 12th, and mounted onto the orbital launch mount the next morning. The two main elements of the vehicle are nearly ready to be stacked. Beyond the spacecraft and booster, additional ground systems are also receiving upgrades. A vertical vent pipe has been installed and the vaporizer has been replaced to allow for higher propellant load capacity, key improvements ahead of Flight 9. These refinements mark the final stage of pre-launch operations. Once S-35 arrives at the pad and is stacked atop B-14, we may see a full wet dress rehearsal to validate the countdown sequence and fuel loading. It hasn't been confirmed whether this test will occur, but given SpaceX's emphasis on safety and performance, it'd be a wise step to include. Despite the optimism, it's important to note that SpaceX itself has not yet issued an official statement on the launch schedule. The FAA, as always, remains a critical factor, and here, there's a wrinkle. According to a recent update, the FAA is still investigating the Flight 8 incident, and SpaceX has not yet submitted a full flight incident report. 
That's surprising to some, especially since Flight 8's failure closely resembled that of Flight 7, which wrapped up its investigation last month. The fact that Flight 8's investigation remains open suggests there may be deeper or less obvious issues still being evaluated. However, there is precedent for SpaceX moving forward with launches while a previous flight is still under review. The FAA has previously allowed such flights to proceed, provided that public safety is guaranteed. Flight 8, for example, launched while the Flight 7 investigation was still active. That said, SpaceX must still receive final approval from the FAA before Flight 9 can launch. So now the big question is, will Flight 9 lift off next week as Musk hinted? That all depends on how quickly SpaceX completes hardware prep, how soon the FAA concludes its review, and whether all systems remain go in the final days. But based on current momentum, the launch window between May 19th and the 25th looks increasingly likely. What do you think? Will Flight 9 happen next week? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below with a yes or a no, and tell me why. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with every phase of SpaceX. SpaceX's development, especially now with the next major Starship launch just around the corner. Now let's shift our attention to the other major reveal from SpaceX, Musk's upcoming company talk at Starbase Texas. Musk confirmed this highly anticipated event with a simple statement, I will be there next week. The talk will be live streamed on X and will focus on one of the most ambitious goals in human history, building a sustainable presence on Mars. If you've been following SpaceX for a while, you'll know these star-based presentations have become a regular occurrence in recent years. Last year's event was packed with detailed updates, including insights into Starship's evolving versions, the development of Raptor engines, and even the bold requirements for establishing a city on Mars. Those insights sparked extensive discussions across the space community and still fuel speculation and analysis today. This time around, the spotlight will likely be on SpaceX's roadmap to Mars. Musk has previously teased both unmanned and crewed Starship missions to the Red Planet with the Optimus unmanned mission tentatively scheduled for the end of next year. Given the scale and complexity of such a mission, this upcoming talk will be crucial in clarifying how SpaceX intends to prepare for it. From launch cadence to life support systems, there are many pieces of the puzzle that fans and experts alike are eager to see fall into place. Beyond Mars, the event may also shed light on several other key developments. For instance, when will Starship V3 and Raptor 3 engines debut? How close are we to seeing a flight-ready version of the upgraded human landing system? What's the timeline for the next uncrewed Starship mission? And how will SpaceX adapt now that the FAA has approved up to 25 launches per year from Starbase and greenlit the broader Starbase city development plan? Clearly, this presentation is set to be more than just a Mars update. It may redefine our expectations for Starship, SpaceX infrastructure, and human spaceflight over the next few years. So while all eyes are on the upcoming Flight 9, don't forget that next week's event will be just as important for understanding the bigger picture. As always, we'll be here to bring you the most exciting revelations as they happen. But that's not all for SpaceX news this week. The company has also reached a remarkable new milestone in its pursuit of rocket reusability this time with the Falcon 9. At 1.02 a.m. Eastern on the 13th, SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 rocket from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center, carrying 28 Starlink satellites into orbit. The satellites were successfully deployed, but the real story unfolded back on Earth. The booster used in this mission, B-1067, not only withstood stormy weather conditions, but also completed its 28th successful landing. This time, aboard the drone ship, just read the instructions. This marks JRTI's 120th successful landing and SpaceX's 446th booster recovery overall, continuing their incredible run of reusability. Most notably, B-1067 now holds the record for the most landings by a single booster in the entire world, 28 and counting. SpaceX quickly highlighted the achievement on social media, proudly stating, Fleet leading Falcon booster completes its 28th launch and landing. Musk added his own voice, exclaiming 28 launches and landings of the same booster. To put this into perspective, B-1067 achieved this just under a month after its previous landing on April 14th. That kind of rapid turnaround time is almost unheard of in rocketry and is a testament to the efficiency, precision, and durability of Falcon 9's design. 
The ultimate goal, as many fans know, is to reach 40 launches and landings with a single booster. With just 12 more flights to go, B-1067 is well on its way, and if SpaceX keeps up this pace, we may see that milestone sooner than expected. But why does it matter? Because it's more than just a record, it's proof of a transformative shift in how spaceflight works. SpaceX's push toward full reusability is saving money, speeding up launch timelines, and making space more accessible than ever. Falcon 9's reliability and flexibility have already made it the workhorse of the commercial launch industry, and achievements like B-1067's 28th flights only widen the gap between SpaceX and its competitors. As we look ahead, let's cheer on B-1067 and the rest of the Falcon fleet. Their success is not only reshaping launch economics, it's helping fund and support SpaceX's ultimate goal to make life multiplanetary. Stay tuned for more updates from Starbase, Flight 9, and beyond. For our final piece of news of today, an important update on Intuitive Machine's IM-2 mission. In March, the Athena lander suffered a major failure after tipping over upon landing near the moon's south pole. Its solar panels ended up misaligned, unable to collect sunlight, and the lander was declared non-operational within a day of arrival. Following over two months of analysis, Intuitive Machines identified multiple contributing factors. The first was a malfunction in Athena's laser altimeter, which experienced signal interference during descent, leading to inaccurate altitude readings. In addition, the low-angle lighting conditions at the lunar south pole, combined with rugged terrain and significantly reduced visibility, challenged the lander's navigation system. Compounding these difficulties, the optical navigation relied on high-altitude images from NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, which failed to represent how surface features appear during a low-altitude approach in such lighting conditions. The IM-2 mission, part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services program, also carried two secondary payloads, a hopping vehicle named GRACE and Lunar Outpost's MAPP, or MAP, rover, but Athena's fall prevented both from deploying. Despite the setback, Intuitive Machines is using lessons from both IM-1 and 2 to improve future landers. Preparations are already well underway for IM-3, scheduled to launch aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 in 2026. With a clearer understanding of the challenges posed by the moon's south pole, the company is working to enhance both hardware and software to ensure greater mission success going forward. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.